Welcome everyone to our Facebook Book Live. Today I'm with Sibylle Mancini Henwood, our uh, Swati partner, uh, Swaga Executive De Director. Hi Sibylle. Hello, Hannah. <laughs> and I'm with our Executive Director, Karin Vidicelli. Hi Karin. Hi Anna, hi Sibylle. Nice to see <laughs> you again here in Canada. Yes. <laughs> So today we are going to talk about our Girls Empowerment Program. But first, Sylvie, can you give us like more information about the situation of girls and women in Eswatini? Okay. Um, thank you, Hannah, and hello, everybody. It's always a pleasure to come to Canada. Beautiful country, wonderful people. Um, so I come from the kingdom of Eswatini. It's a small country in the southern part of Africa surrounded by South Africa mostly, and on the east, it's bordered by Mozambique. Um, so Swaziland is a beautiful country with a rich culture. Um, Karin knows it very well. She loves Swaziland. She comes quite often. Um, but it's also a very complex uh, country because we have a dual legal system, for example, uh, where on one hand, we have modern law, Roman Dutch law, and on the other hand, we have very strong cultural laws. And this is where we often find that um, issues such as gender inequality and patriarchy and negative cultural practices are reinforced. And this affects mostly women and girls, of course, in Swaziland, where we are now seeing, uh, where we see women are mostly affected by poverty. Um, the country has a high rate of poverty. About 60% of the population is living in poverty, and the majority of those are women. Uh, women and girls are mostly affected by HIV AIDS, especially adolescent girls and uh, young women. Um, we are seeing very high rates of teenage pregnancy, which then leads to um, high dropout uh, in, in high school in particular. And, um, you know, other issues, you know, related to um, access to information, access to um, uh, you know, uh, an economy, you know, uh, uh, livelihoods that can allow people to have uh, economic independence, you know, uh, financial literacy um, as well. We're also seeing that where women uh, are found to be in positions of power, because the patriarchy is so strong and because they've been socialized into the system of male dominance, women who are also in positions of power then tend to reinforce or play out these patriarchal norms. So maybe just to provide just broadly you know, a snapshot, an overview, um, that's what I could share um, to begin with. Oh yeah. So I have, a, I have a quick question. How many wives now does oh, the king God. has? <laughs> I was hoping nobody would ask me that question because I stopped keep it counting a, a long time ago. So to be honest with you, I have no idea. Because last um, time I came with you, had about 30. I think, no, it was 16. Oh, you see, you know better than I do. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so yeah, that's those... because that part of the problem. Yes. That's why I mentioned that, yes. because yes. It's, it's, it's the highest level yeah. uh, of, in the country, the king, yeah. and the yeah. example he is given yeah. is mm -hmm. kind of. You know, I know that it's related to tradition, but at the same time, yes. You know, so it's, it's, the it's a number of uh, it's a number of issues, uh, really. You know, um, also, you know, issues around um, some some cultural practices and traditions which which hinder women from participating in decision making spheres. You know, for example, women who are widowed are not allowed to participate in certain public spheres. You know, because there's a, a stigma or a belief mm -hmm. that's attached to it. You know, they are not allowed, for example, to... We're having elections. Uh, this is election year for Swaziland as well, and um, parliamentary elections. So women who maybe who are quite capable, women who, are very in, who could be very influential and bring change into the country and make a positive contribution for, for the country as a whole, won't be able to participate in those spheres. You know, they can't run for um, for elections because they are widowed. So some of, these are some of the dynamics. You know that uh, women uh, experience. Okay, thank you. 
And so kind for people who are watching and are not really familiar with the girls empowerment club, what can you tell us about the program? So, in fact, we are running this program for uh, almost 10 years now, and we're the greatest example in <laughs> Eswatini. I'm not still familiar with the new name of Swaziland, but I will. So, uh, so the program began in, in, uh, in Eswatini, and, uh, and, and it was really about giving a voice to girls, give them, inform them about their rights, and also about their health, because at this time in Swaziland, for example, the, the rate of uh, HIV is, it was very, very high, it's still very high, but it's, it's better now. So, so it was really about uh, informed girls and about their rights, about their health, and also to give them a real voice. At the end, uh, what we would, what, what we would like to achieve was to to keep them in school so to to have a, really a generation of girls uh, able to stay in school to 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 go to high school too and why not to university mm -hmm. so to give them hope mm -hmm. that they can become doctor lawyers yes. executive director <laughs> of a very well-known organization so i think that uh, that was uh, that was the, go the, the goal now, based on the model we developed with Swaga in, in uh, Iswatini, we, are, uh, we just launched some clubs in Ghana two years ago and uh, in Togo also. So that's great because we did not begin from, from scratch. Mm -hmm. We began with the model developed in, in Swaziland. And it's very funny to see in Ghana girls singing, you know, the motto yes, the same one. <laughs> of, of Swaziland. Yes. So, so it's, uh, and this whole program, the Girl Empowerment Program, was supported by uh, volunteers, but Canadian volunteers, but also South, South volunteers. Mm -hmm. And they share their expertise, their knowledge about the club to, to build a new program in Ghana and to go to. And, uh, and we are very, very proud uh, of our achievement. I think that now we have more than 4,000 girls uh, all over uh, in, in East and West Africa uh, participating in the club. And, uh, and we are just beginning also with, uh, with boys because boys and men should be also part of the change of behavior. And, and on this long, long, long road, to equality because it's exactly what at the end we would like to achieve uh, a man and a woman equal in their society to build their society to develop their society so similarly as Kain just said the club was launched almost 10 years ago yeah. so what have been the main achievements and change you've noticed since then okay um, I, I'd say for, for us, some of the exciting things we've seen is um, how young girls who started off as members of the clubs have evolved and grown to become mentors of the girls' empowerment clubs because the, the, the model is more of a peer-to-peer -peer engagement model. So yes, we do have teachers supporting the clubs you know, for sustainability purposes, um, and for it to be institutionalized within the schools, because this is a school-based program. But the model itself looks into training young women who have graduated from high school, maybe they're already at university level, to come. We train them around these issues, HIV AIDS, gender-based violence, and so on, to come and be mentors um, and role models to young girls within the schools. So what has really encouraged us is seeing how girls who have graduated out of high school through the clubs, when they get to university level, come back to say they want to be mentors as well. So that, that is something we really celebrate as, as Swaga and Crossroads International. And then more um, at the programmatic level, we are seeing that girls are reporting cases of gender-based violence that they experience more and more by being members of the clubs. They know where to get help. Um, they know that it's not their fault, and they're coming forward and, um, and seeking post-gender-based violence services or post-rape services 
or even if it's physical abuse or um, neglect that they're exper experiencing at home. Um, a national survey on, on violence uh, for, that was done in Eswatini uh, in 2007 showed that one in three females experience sexual violence by the time they turn 18 years old. However, only one in seven report these to a formal structure where they can get post-rape care. And the main reason behind that was usually they don't even know that what they've experienced is, is violence or it's a violation. So now through the clubs we are seeing that the girls know more about this. They're reporting the violence. We also see that um, the academic performance is improving quite immensely. And this is feedback that we're getting from the Ministry of Education, you know, from the teachers, from the school uh, administrators, like the head teachers as well. They, you'd imagine, of course, their focus in Swaziland is mostly uh, the academic part of it. So when they start seeing that, oh, having this initiative is helping the girls do better even with school, with their literacy levels, they support the program even more. And we really appreciate Crossroads being um, open to bringing in new components. You know, we sit down together as partners, we brainstorm together, and because Crossroads has more access to um, new approaches in the world, you know, fresh ideas, they assisted us to bring on board um, a library component to the clubs. So we're not just going on and on about abuse and HIV, but we've introduced libraries, you know, ways for the girls to enjoy reading, to be excited about the concept of learning more through reading, through literature, through research. Um, when I came, so one, girl, uh, one girl also read one of her poems. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. Yes. And I think it's also yes. very important for self-esteem yes. and for confidence. Yes. Because yes. Uh, one teacher, Olga, I think. Olga. Olga. Yes. She, mm -hmm. she, she told me, you know, Madame Karine, the girls, they are shining. Yes. They are literally shining. Yes. Yes. So I think yes. it's also part yes. of the part of And the you program. remember you went to grandmother. Yeah. When you came. And she was so proud. Yes, so we, we, back home, you know, we still have, uh, because of the, there's a time when HIV, HIV AIDS was really having a huge impact on society. So a lot of children lost their parents, you know, and so you would find a lot of children are often invulnerable and living with their grandparents. So I think the child that you met, that was the same scenario where she's living with her grandmother. And so having the club is supporting this grandmother to look after this little girl, you know, to build her confidence, to build her worldview, and yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's it's it's, it's really and it, it, it was in a very remote area. Yes, in this uh, sugar plantation. Yes, where people are very very vulnerable. Yes, it's, yeah. it's what you told me, and, and we can see. Yes, the so, poverty. Is so the poverty was very, very, mm -hmm. is very, very high in this sector. So I was quite impressed yes. by uh, the impact mm -hmm. of the girl empowerment uh, program in this she area. Was, she must have been about 12, 13 years old, that girl. She's a little and girl. her sister was uh, eight years old and she was already in the, in the club. Yes. yes. I remember. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. It's great to hear story. Do you have any other? Success stories of girls you could share with us? Uh, maybe it would be uh, maybe a story of uh, one girl that I remember. Her name is uh, Ginger, two actually. Um, there's one girl, her nickname is uh, Ginger. And so she, she was amongst the first few members of the girls' empowerment clubs when she was at primary school level. And when she moved to high school, she went to a very um, uh, a culture-based uh, institution, um, a very traditional high school, but she navigated the system. She was very determined that there would be a girls' empowerment club in the school. You know, um, if my if if this is the last thing I do, I will do this. Imagine she was only starting in her first year. She was a young girl. She was new to this community. 
but she was there following the school administration, following us as well. Initially, they, they didn't quite understand this thing. She's talking about, you're going to be talking about girls' rights or finance we are and all of that. But, you know, she, she really marketed the program there and spoke about how it will help to reduce the rate of teenage pregnancy mm -hmm. and, you know, and academic performance would improve and all of that. And she was following Swaga. I remember at the time we kept saying to her, we don't really have much funding to start another club, Ginger. We don't have the money. But she was on our case. We had to make sure that in our work plans for the following year, we speak to Crossroads to say, please help us out now to start a club in this new school. And uh, so those are some of the, the success stories. And we've had a couple of girls doing that. There's another one more recently. Her name is Banzile Matsapula. And um, she's also a dynamic young woman. Um, she also pushed to start a club in her new school as well, you know, and uh, she works very closely with us as Swaga. She's looking forward to going to a university. Um, another girl is now, she started an NGO back home, uh, working with young women, uh, community-based young women, you know, around issues of, um, especially if they are young mothers, you know, um, so we've got quite dynamic young women and I'm looking forward to these young women going into leadership positions in Swaziland and changing the narrative around uh, women and girls in Swaziland. So next time you ask me that question, maybe five years from now, I'll have a different response. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Like, yeah, it seems that it's, it's, it's starting. It's starting. Yeah. That's great. So you, as you said, you the club down in school, so you, can you tell us about the work you are doing with the Swati Ministry of Education? Okay. Um, so the Ministry of Education, we, we didn't just start off working with the Ministry of Education. This, this again, is where Crossroads has been quite instrumental, you know, in um, really broadening our thinking as an organization to say, maybe take it up a couple of notches higher. Don't just be an organization that is implementing a program in the ministry, but see yourselves more as a partner to the ministry, their main implementing partner. Um, so this, mo this uh, motivated us as Swaga, you know, to say, okay, let's start a conversation with the Minister of Education. And Crossroads has assisted it, us in, in doing that, in framing the conversation to be around, how do we make the program sustainable and make it a program that is owned by the Ministry of Education. Um, so that now took us to a process where in developing the curricula for the clubs, we really involved the Ministry of Education. We looked at what, is the, the, what are the priorities for the government, for the Ministry of Education, when it comes to issues of um, sexual reproductive health, HIV prevention, gender-based violence prevention, um, post-service delivery, and so on. Um, and in identifying those areas with Crossroads then, we started looking at how do we improve our manuals? How do we improve the approach for the program? Um, how do we have conversations with the leadership within the government? And so as, as we are sitting here now, we are starting to see that partnership really coming together. And Crossroads has been very instrumental in doing that, you know, in encouraging us, in guiding us, you know, helping us think about how other countries do it. And then we also come with that approach. Um, and, and now as we speak, Crossroads is even looking at saying, okay, let's, because they do volunteer placements at Swaga to support the work that we do, but also to help strengthen the partnership with the Ministry of Education, Crossroads is talking about, let's have volunteers in both entities so that it's really um, solidified. So it's a very exciting time um, for us. And the main thing is that it will make the program more sustainable. It will be institutionalized because of that partnership with the government. That's, that's right. Yes, I think that this is the future. Yeah. And, and just to say, uh, Sibili, we are working together. Yeah. We are partners. Yeah. and. Uh, 
And I think that you are giving us also a lot in terms of new ideas to share with Ghana, yeah. with Togo. So it's really a dynamic. Yeah. And I see that uh, as a real dynamic. And, uh, and because, because uh, Eswatini <laughs> is not such a, such a big country, yes. it's possible also to mobilize at the national level. Which is more difficult in other countries because mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in Ghana, for example, the population is very high. So yeah. you know, to implement such a program in every region of Ghana, it's mm -hmm. a big challenge. Yeah. But in Swaziland, it is. And mm -hmm. what I found with the Ministry of Education of uh, of Eswatini is that they are very dynamic. Mm -hmm. People are very engaged, mm -hmm. and they they are. It's not only written on paper that mm -hmm. girls need to be yes. taken into consideration. Yes. It's a reality, and yes. that's super great. Yes. And uh, and in my in my point of view, A. Swatini could also play a role as a real leader in the region, yeah. at the regional level, and, uh, and because you know uh, it's working. Mm -hmm. And now it's 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 demonstrated that it's working. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very confident, and I think that it's gonna it, it's gonna give a best example possible for the country around, yes. and uh, and and an example that you can scale up such a project, mm -hmm. such a program, mm -hmm. and you can work with the government also mm -hmm. to implement it. Yes. Yes. That's, that's, that's actually true, and I've, and I've heard you, Karin, um, talk to government representatives in this way, you know, to motivate them to start seeing, you know, the role of the government in this way yes. as well, you know, and I, I think that also helps to foster the, the partnership because there's a tendency back home for maybe government agencies to see us as... Um, um, maybe as, as competition yeah, or antagonistic, not. you know, or you're always wanting to criticize and all of that. But we are now saying, look, let's look at our commonalities and work together. And um, improve there and the improve. Yeah. Um, and improve, yes. Mm -hmm. So the government, when it comes to the manuals that we've developed, oh my gosh, they were amazing. They, they have this formal panel uh, for reviewing curricula and they are so technical, they, the way they are so informed about the issues. You know, if you would see the manuals we developed before collaborating with the government and compare them to what we have now, you know, um, yes, we needed what we had to get to where we are now, uh -huh. but you can see the difference is huge. And there is appropriation yeah. by the government. By the government. Because they were part of it. They were part of it and they buy into it. And what we love also is that um, we didn't feel like we were compromising on the issues, you know. They, no. Yeah, we, 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 we still felt like the issues are coming across still quite strongly, you know, because the government is also seeing the impact, you know, that this is having on, on our community, you know, as a country. Um, so, so, yeah, there's quite a bit of work that's, uh, that's been done uh, with the government, and it's, it's very encouraging. Also, Crossroads has been... Uh, uh, supporting Swaga quite a lot with our advocacy work, where we've been pushing for uh, comprehensive legislation um, to address sexual and gender-based yeah. violence in Swaziland. You know, sexual offences and domestic violence in particular. And uh, about two days before I, I came here, it passed the House of Senate. Yeah. Of yes. So. Oh, yes. So. Um, now we're just uh, hoping and praying that it's going to be signed off by yes. His Majesty the King. So it will happen. Yes, it will happen soon. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. that's that's great. Mm -hmm. I know you talk about Crossroads volunteers. How are they like supporting the program and so on? Oh, yeah, the Crossroads volunteers. Yeah. Oh, we've had we've had quite a few over the years. Now the the way we work at Swaga is. It's, it's not in silos to say it's only the girls empowerment program. So Crossroads supports us with volunteers that support the overall integrated program of SWAGA, where we are doing prevention of gender-based violence. That's where we work with 
girls and boys, men and women in communities. Uh, and then we have the care and support for survivors of gender-based violence. And Crossroads there helps us in terms of maybe um, identifying, helping us identify, um, sorry, volunteers, Canadian volunteers with experience in those areas to come and um, maybe have a training for our case managers, our counselors, um, doing debriefing sessions, doing assessments of the systems that we have in place and making recommendations on how to improve that. Um, I recall about, I think it was two years ago, Crossroads sent a counselor across um, uh, who, who came in and she looked into our systems around how we provide care and support for survivors. Now, at the time, we thought she would just come and look at that piece. But she went beyond and she started looking at the welfare of the counselors themselves and went on to highlight areas that we need to focus on as an organization, you know, pointing out the fact that if your counselors are not healthy, in terms of you making sure that their mental health is well taken care of, they can't take care of the next person. You know, so that's where then the whole concept of looking into vicarious trauma started coming in. Um, also with access to justice work, uh, where we've been working with the justice delivery system, doing an, uh, an assessment to look at what are things that would cause a survivor to withdraw a case after reporting a case. Crossroads supported us with volunteers there to come and observe the justice delivery system. And, and we came up with a report, a court watch report, um, with concrete recommendations on what things need to be improved within the state, within the Ministry of Justice, to make sure that when a case is reported, it's seen through and, and certain little things are addressed so that a survivor doesn't withdraw um, those cases. And then, of course, the support to the girls in Parliament program directly, you know, we've had um, uh, volunteers who have expertise in monitoring and evaluation, in finance management, in programming, you know, who have come in. Um, more recently, we had one in HR, you know, just to help us look yeah. at the overall mm -hmm. system, yeah, then come up with tools for how do we track, you know, the girls, how do we... Mm -hmm make sure that the mentors are reporting and giving information on what's going on in the clubs. So, yes. Yeah, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy uh, to have the chance to talk about this because it's good reflection for me as well, you know, to say, <laughs> wow, it's been a lot of support from Crossroads. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. And to, to finish, you know that 2018 is the 60th anniversary mm -hmm. of Crossroads, mm -hmm. and we have been partner for a long time now. So I was like thinking maybe you have a few words you would like to say about our partnership. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been an amazing partnership. Um, Swaga is truly blessed to have Crossroads. Uh, we we always say that um, Crossroads is a blessing to us from from the Lord and. We really look forward to this partnership going on much longer, Karine. <laughs> um, going on much longer. And a, a happy birthday to, to Crossroads. And we are confident that, you know, an organization like Crossroads, one that is selfless, one that is willing to uh, celebrate you as a partner and not be the one that's, you know, being in the limelight and taking the credit uh, for everything, but Crossroads has a culture of um, appreciating its partners, appreciating the opinions of its partners. I've never heard of uh, an organization that will take some of its partners uh, and put them on their board to influence policy and governance at that level. It is very rare. Yes, it may happen, you know, especially in the HIV AIDS um, arena, you find that it does happen. But in the case of Crossroads, there wasn't maybe any funder that was forcing it on Crossroads to say, um, for you to get funding from us, you need to make sure that this is the representation you have of your beneficiaries or like this or like that. It's just a concept, a policy that Crossroads came up with um, several years ago, and it is working. And... Yeah, we, we are looking forward to this partnership growing 
to learning more together, um, to charting new territory, to now this model is being replicated in other countries. We've got red countries we've never, organizations we've never heard of from different countries getting in touch with us mm -hmm. and saying, oh, we've heard you are implementing this school-based girls empowerment program. Can we learn more about it? You know, so even others who are funding us now are saying, oh, Swata, can you talk about what you do with Crossroads? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and so just, great. so it's, uh, it certainly is a demonstration project and we are seeing how it's being replicated also in other countries. And, um, and we really hope that Crossroads will continue to be flexible to, um, to change, to new ideas, and um, because they, they are not rigid to say, no, this is how we work. We can't add new components. Uh, it depends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, what, what, I should, so, what, I, what I could add on that is that we are, once again, we are working together and we are building our project together. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, way we, the way Crossroads is working is based on the needs identified yes, yes. by the partners yes. because Crossroads is a Canadian organization mm -hmm. we we know about a Swatini mm -hmm. but we are not the one who is there so you are the most uh, the, 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 the best I mean to to identify the needs mm -hmm. and to and with with, within a discussion, a conversation, yeah. we are building those projects. Yeah. And it's the same in every country. Uh, and, and we, Crossroads is absolutely nothing without their partners. So you <laughs> heard that. It's key. It's key. No, it's, That's true. it's yes. key. We, yes. we, we are just uh, a tool and, um, and, and we, are, we are privileged mm. to have partners like you in, uh, in the, the eight countries we are working yeah. in. So yeah, and Crossroads is 60 years old. Yes. 60 years of volunteering too. Yes. And, uh, and uh, we hope that in 60 years, I won't be there for sure, but <laughs> others are going to, to fulfill the mission yeah. of the organization differently for sure. Because what I really, really uh, appreciate now and, and having uh, spent five years uh, with my family in Africa is that there are so many competencies, mm -hmm. so many capacities yes. now in Africa that yes, we, we can continue to work mm -hmm. together, but at one point, mm -hmm. it's it's your it's your future. <laughs> and, and, and I think uh, and it's much more solidarity <sighs> connection because yeah. if we want a world where peace is is. A, a peace, peaceful world. Mm. We need to work all together to yeah. achieve it, yeah. and yeah. not uh, everyone yeah. in his corner, yeah. like it's the case actually. Yeah. So I truly believe in that. Yeah. And I would like, as a, the last word, I'm going to let the last word to Cyrille, but I would like also to invite all of you. Uh, October 11, 2018. It's the International Day of the Girl. And uh, we'll have a breakfast here in Toronto. It's a very, very uh, interesting breakfast. With uh, and, and if you want to learn more about the Girl Empowerment Program, please uh, look at our website, and uh, and you'll get uh, all the information. Mm -hmm. Sabine, it's your turn. We will That's be word. celebrating the International Day of the Girl as well in Swaziland. So um, in solidarity, you know, in, at an international scale. Please do support um, this brilliant initiative. Um, it's a fundraising platform towards the mm -hmm. Girls Empowerment Program, not just in Swaziland, but um, in all the three countries where Crossroads is working. And I just wanted to mention also that um, Crossroads is really uh, working quite a bit around capacity building, so that whatever programs, that's through the volunteers, so that whatever programs uh, Crossroads is supporting us to implement, um, whether volunteers are there or not, the, co the program continues um, to evolve uh, as it should. So um, when volunteers come in, that's a very important piece that we look into collaboratively, both the organization, recipient organization and the, and the volunteers uh, with support for Crossroads, looking into how do we build our systems to make sure that whatever program is being implemented evolves and it continues to grow. Um, and it's not just entirely dependent on 
uh, crossroads for some or people. others or others but because you know mm. it's the same with, with us huh? yeah. we are quite dependent yes <laughs> no but also with, yeah. with our with, with our government but yeah. it's 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 always the case with civil society organization mm. and we need all together to find a way mm. to support civil society organization yes. because to transform mm. your country to transform our world mm. we need civil society voices yes. and yes. we need to reinforce mm. civil society voices as swaga as yes. other organization in the world i think it's yes. it's really critical yes. by the moment yes. when we see uh, you know the country beside canada <laughs> what happened <laughs> we need to raise our voice and to push and uh, and as a woman but also as citizen of yeah. the world yes yes and africa is evolving africa is changing and swaziland too so it's, it's fitting that it's the voices of the people from that continent and from es the kingdom of Eswatini that are speaking for themselves and representing their own voices. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sylvie. Thank you, Karin. I hope this was a good time to talk about the government job and you learn about what's happening in Eswatini. Um, you can share the Facebook live. Yes. Yes. Because now it's a page. video. Yes. It's gonna be in our page. Yeah. And you can go on our website to learn more about our programs or our volunteer opportunities. Yes, you can volunteer with us too. Yes. So <laughs> so please get more information. Thank you very much to Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>